Hello, welcome to day three of the um, NWU's MBA um, study school week. We're actually in day three and uh, I'm Ronnie Lottrit. I'm a professor in strategy at the Norwich University Business School. And uh, it's lovely to have our professors of practice also here really applying their, their traits um, and speaking to the MBA students about, about it's actually a skills transfer. So Prof. Jock Fall. Um, I would also almost like to say welcome back in town. He's, uh, he's somebody born and bred in the vicinity and we followed his success quite a number of years. So, uh, Prof. Jacques Phil, your, your, your first question is, I know you are a professional CEO in professional sports organization, actually the Northern Titans. We know their track record. You've been, been done well, doing well. And uh, therefore, my first question is, what? What creates organizational excellence? Yeah, thanks. And it's nice to be, able to be back uh, at my roots almost. So um, I think excellence starts with a mindset, isn't it? Uh, mm. and, a, and a willingness to buy into it. And that's got to be continuous of, of nature. Um, for me, uh, I'd like to benchmark a lot. It is a, a tool that we use and benchmark and compare ourselves with mm. others. Mm. But at the end of the day, um, you need a mirror in front of you. You've got to be able to measure and assess um, because you, you got to, it starts with the audit for me. Where are we? Mm. Um, and there's a, there's a great saying, we are where we are because of who we are. Mm. So if we want to be in a different place, we've got to change ourselves. And yeah. it's that mindset and that buy into that mindset. How do you, how do you get to, to such a mindset? You are a, you're well known for turnaround strategies and being a turnaround strategist. So what do you say, what advice would you give to, let's say, to, to any entity on this continent who's struggling mm. and, uh, and needs to turn around? Um, is it a short-term thing? Is it a long-term thing? What, what advice would you give pertaining to that? I think the first assessment is to see who's part of the problem and who's, who, who's part of the, uh, the solution and who that is currently part of the problem can turn into being part of the solution. I think yes. that's the first you know, assessment um, of it. A again, you are doing certain things and not doing certain things and hence that's the position uh, that you're in. Mm. So you've got to identify that. Um, it's difficult to, to pinpoint one thing, but mm. um, buy-in for me is the most important. You've got to give people... Um, I think reasons to go in a certain direction, to operate on a certain level. But I think you've got to create an awareness that you, you choose your own operate level. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and performance management to me is absolutely crucial. And mm. then upskilling. People sometimes fail because they don't have the skills to do so. Um, you've you got to analyze cleverly to understand what is need to turn it, uh, needed to turn it around. I don't think people f um, spend enough time into the buy-in of the door. Yeah. There's a big phase and everybody blames everybody or their guilty partner is not in the, in the room or it's all external uh, circumstances that we don't control. So the moment you decide to, to improve your operating level and collectively from the organization's point of view, that helps. Mm. So you've got to strive to something and then inspire people to do so, you know, um, make them winners and make them sit with winners. Mm. Mm. Um, you sometimes got to go slow to go quick. I think yeah. I, I sometimes, the mistake I made was almost that I, uh, I invested uh, not enough time to get buy-in. and. Also, feedback from the people that's dealing with it. There's a lot of information that it could come out. Co-designing uh, final solutions mm, to me mm, is, is mm. also crucial because then people buy into it. The moment they co-design a solution, they're already part of it. Mm. The moment you, you almost confront them with a fight to complete, it's, it's, they look at your plan and look at reasons why um, it might not work. So it's the one thing I've learned as I got a bit older and experienced is to, to go slow sometimes uh, to go fast. Mm. Get that by in co-design the solution. Mm. So for mm. me that is uh, also crucial in turnaround. You're great. I know you're a great believer in, uh, in investing in human capital and, and, and this is what will move the country and, and Africa as a continent as well. Um, this is why the MBA, MBA is so, so much a flourishing um, industry in the sense that we need trained and experienced managers and the head hunting our guys all over the world. So, so yeah, um, come to think about that uh, in terms of, 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 of the human factor. Um, 
we are not just a, uh, another factor of production, but but let's move move into senior management. That's your that's that's the train which you find yourself for last or well, many couple of years. Um, how do you see the role of leadership? And w when I speak about leadership, I use managing leadership interchangeably, and and maybe for that matter, the C your C-suite as well. You know, CFO, COO, etc. Mm -hmm. How do you see them? in correlation with, with organizational excellence? Yeah, I think I said the tone. The tone com, comes from the top. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They also, you know, got to provide strategic uh, um, direction, but they got to institutionalize the values that's chosen as the operational mm, values. Mm, it starts mm. off with them. Firstly, they got to reflect it, they got to understand it, and they they got to integrate it. It can't be a poster mm. on the wall. People got to absolutely live it. It's usually a combination of normative values and functional or operational values in itself. So, and, and, and the problem is sometimes it's almost a fuzzy word like respect. Yeah. So you got to bring that. What is respect in your, in your workplace? And, and this is where your C-level managers plays a massive role institutionalizing this. So, it's one thing to, to determine what are we going to do and the, the how are we going to do it. Um, sometimes I'm more problem, problematic in, in what, is, what, is, what to us is a, is a key performance indicator yeah. and a quality indicator. Mm. indicator. Mm. I think management doesn't spend enough time on quality indicators. Mm. What, mm. What's a good meeting? What is, what is considered to be good um, in your various job profiles. Mm, mm. Can you identify them? Can you measure it? Can you develop a scorecard? So for me, I try and, and mm. say to people, it doesn't matter what you do, if, it, if it's a coach, coaching session, if the team is trailing, uh, training, if the team is traveling, if the team needs to be kitted out, yeah, yeah. Um, what would be a good standard of operating? And how do you measure against that? And mm. let them choose it themselves. That's where the buy-in comes from. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You tell us if, if a, a team needs to travel from the hotel to the airport, when is it considered to be good? So, and then measure it as much mm, as you can. Mm. Develop a scorecard next to it. But again, you know, you've got to continuously develop a consciousness towards yeah. this. You know, that willingness to improve. You either spend emotional energy on defending why you can't get things right or spending that energy on how do I get to a better level. So mm -hmm. for me, that mm -hmm. is the mindset. Get people to spend energy on how to be improved. It's a simple thing. If you say to people, why did you do it like that? They'll give you an explanation. If you ask people, if you to do this again, what will you do differently? Mm -hmm. You know, it evokes a, a mindset of improvement and training. Yeah. No, that's, that, that type of reflection is, 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 is good indeed. A last question, although maybe a bit unfair. There's a cliche that says, South Africa and also our continent for that matter is, let's say, a country without consequences. I'm talking about management. How do we address that? Yeah, I think accountability is an is a, is a issue. Mm. Um, I, mean, mm. I spoke to industry leaders um, and they said to me that is the thing. Mm. Um, I, I, th I think it sets a culture if I can get away with underperforming, you know, not, um, you know, using the company we're utilizing the company resources to best affect mm. corruption. And, and the moment you've got a c culture like that, it is very difficult to change. Yeah. It's, it's almost business and professional ethics that needs to come back. Mm. Good human material, but you know, um, if you, it, it should be, if you, if you can't do uh, the time, don't do the crime. Mm. Mm. Whereby <laughs> now you can do the crime because there is no time. Yeah. That unfortunately yeah. does. It's a massive thing. Accountability, if you, if you look at, at places like Singapore where there's a high level of accountability, mm. for me, mm. it's almost, Prof. Ronnie, uh, one of those cornerstones to, mm. to turn it around. It's, uh, for me in sport, when it's fallen flat, it's a lack of leadership is definitely the one. And then um, accountability mm. is, is, mm. is the, the other one, governance, if you like. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Lack of leadership, no accountability. Um, Society needs that because that to me is the fuel to excellence. Mm, uh, I've mm. got to be accountable for it. Exactly that. Prof. Jock, always nice to have you on board. Thank you for investing in our MBAs. Upskilling, transfer of skilling, it happened this afternoon and uh, look forward to, to our next session. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Prof. Ronnie.